As we enter the final week of the regular season, what are the biggest concerns for Atlanta Braves fans heading into the postseason? I'll discuss that and I'll also discuss it with the guys over from Cespedes Family Barbecue on this episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Make sure you check out the podcast there as well at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Always enjoy hearing from you. And also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button there as well. To help support the show, if you're an everydayer of the podcast, let me know down in the comment section below on YouTube. Really do appreciate all the support that you give me here at Locked On Braves. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about the biggest concerns for the Braves heading into the postseason. I got a continuation from my discussion with the guys from Cespedes Family Barbecue about that and also the postseason format. So make sure you stick around for that great discussion with those guys. This is going to be part two of that conversation. Part one was posted over the weekend. You haven't given that, given that a listen. Make sure you go back and do so. We also had our Miners Monday episode on Monday as well. Good list, listen there as the minor league season comes to an end. So Got a, good, a lot of good stuff here for you on the podcast as we get into the final week of the regular season. I cannot believe it is here. It's it's sad. Also excited about the postseason, but Braves are limping into the postseason a little bit here, especially on the starting rotation. And that's where I want to start because Jake Mintz asked me, and we had our conversation. You'll hear it here in a minute. What are Braves fans' biggest concerns right now? What are they getting upset about? And it's very clearly the pitching staff. I mean, the offense is one of the best offenses in baseball, not just this year, but history. That we all know, top to bottom, how dangerous they are. But if there's one thing I think that gives a lot of Braves fans hesitation to say that they are you know, front runners, got a good chance of winning a World Series, which they do, it would be the, the starting rotation. It would be the pitching. And look, when these guys are on, I think they're more than capable of you know winning – postseason games, winning a World Series, putting up good or having good performances. I'm not concerned about that in the least, but we're talking about what concerns you the most. And it's definitely the pitching, especially when you talk about the fact that Freed's on the IL, Morton's on the IL. You know, Strider has had kind of his ups and downs this year. He's had some moments where, uh, you know, he'll give up a crooked number like he did to the Nats the other day, giving up three runs. I mean, there are certainly some question marks. Bryce Elder, an all-star in the first half. He's been, you know, a fifth starter in the second half. Kyle Wright, you know, injured all year, not able to come back to a point where he's in the rotation. I mean, there are some serious and, and valid concerns about this starting rotation. Now, looking at how the Braves get through the postseason right now, assuming nobody else gets hurt, and let's hope that's the case, and let's hope that Max Freed comes back healthy. We're also, you know, banking on that as well, that those blisters go away and that they're all cleared up and he's ready to go for game one of the NLDS. I talked about this on Monday's podcast. The Braves can kind of get by in the National League Division Series, only having two and a half, three starters, because you can pitch Freed and Strider twice in this series. And that's crazy to say in a five-game series. We're going to talk about the postseason format a lot at the end of this. I really want you to stick around and listen to that, especially the what Jake, the other Jake has to say about the postseason. One thing I love that he said, and a lot of fans don't want to hear this, the postseason is not about being fair. It is about entertainment. And that's exactly true. But there are several off days in the NLDS, and there's obviously a bunch of off days leading up to it. The Braves can pitch Freed in game one on Saturday, or if they want to give him more time, you can go Strider in game one, however you want to draw it up. But let's say they go Freed in game one on Saturday. You got an off day on Sunday. You can go Strider in game two on Monday. You got another off day on Tuesday. And then you can go Bryce Elder bullpen game on Wednesday. And then you can pitch Freed. On regular rest on Thursday, you got an off day on Friday, and then you'd have Strider for regular rest on Saturday for a potential game five. Because of all these off days, you can get through the NLDS with only three starters. Now, obviously, if they advance, you're going to have to find a way to work Morton in there. You know, I think they should probably carry Alan Winans or Darius Fines or A.J. smith Shaver on this roster, along with Kyle Wright, to give you those bulk guys 
to give you some innings. I certainly think that's a possibility. But it is a huge concern right now. When you look at this Braves team, what could trip them up the most, which is something else we talk about with the guys from Sesame's Family Barbecue, it is that starting rotation. Now, a couple of other news items. You had Jeff Pass and trolling Braves fans on Monday. Don't buy into it. Acuna's the runaway MVP. Moogie's not going to win because he can also play second base. That's just not valid argument here. What Ronald is doing, he is by far uh, the runaway MVP winner in my mind, and I think in a lot of people's minds. But I thought that was interesting on Monday and, and quite funny. Tickets for the NLDS and NLCS are already sold out, and that is just absurd and crazy. Make sure you look for tickets over on Game Time. I did myself. You got standing room only tickets for around a hundred dollars for Game One of the NLDS, but. They are sold out. You're going to have to go to the secondary market to get some, and if you do, make sure you go, go to Game Time. Use our promo code to get $20 off your first purchase. Also, A. Ray Adrianza, reinstated from the 60-day IL and de designated for assignment. No need for him at this point. You got Nicky Lopez. You got Vaughn Grissom. I think Braden Shoemaker's probably ahead of him. I think Luke Waddell's probably ahead of him on that pecking order, but do want to make sure I gave you that little bit of news. Now, I got this continued conversation with – Jake and Jordan from Sesame's Family Barbecue. Hope you enjoy the rest of our discussion. Again, I really enjoyed my time talking with them, and I think you will as well. We'll discuss that here next. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. At LinkedIn, this is called Deep Sales. And they built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at LinkedIn.com slash locked on. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on and get started. Braves will start a three-game series with the Cubs at home on Tuesday, beginning at 7.20 p.m. Eastern. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app, Search Braves. Now I want to transition it, and I want to give you the opportunity to ask me some questions. I know we talked about this beforehand. Um, obviously, you guys follow the baseball on a national level uh, and know, you know a lot about a lot of different teams, but you said you wanted to ask me some questions, so I'm going to give you that opportunity now. What questions do you have for me on the Braves? So the Braves are such a juggernaut where everything seems to just go right all the time, at least over the last couple of years. As I mentioned, last year's playoff exit can be chalked up to misfortune, right? What are Braves fans mad about? What gets <laughs> under their skin right now on the current team? Because part of being a fan of a team is hating guys on your favorite team, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy's in again. Oh, why is he getting a start? Who like what irks Braves world right now when every I know they're on like a, a bit of a slide right now, but I just that doesn't matter. Everyone relax. That's not important. What over the course of the season has been like the number one concern for Atlanta Braves fans? Yeah, I mean, if you want to know what the concerns are, check my comments on the YouTube after the podcast <laughs> when we lose a game and, and that'll give you a good idea. Um, but I would think probably the biggest thing is the pitching. Um, you know, there are, there are stretches this year where the Braves pitching, uh, they've just gotten shelled. And a lot of it is the offense is so good. It covers up a lot of that. But I think if there's one thing that consistently all year long, Braves fans have, um, been more upset about the most, it's probably the pitching. And I mentioned earlier, they've had to use 16 starters this year. Max Fried's gone for most of the year. Kyle Wright's gone for most of the year. That's the guy who finished second in this NL Cy Young last year in Max Fried, and it's a guy that won 21 games last year. And you lose those guys at the beginning of the season, and you have to fill in with a bunch of, of rookies and guys that don't have a lot of experience, that's going to lead to some bad results. But it's even, you know, Charlie Morton, and you guys said earlier that Charlie Morton's been great. Go ask Braves fans. Most of them would probably not agree with you on that front because he's had stretches this year where – it's just all of a sudden he's walking a lot, he hits a lot, and he gives up a, a grand slam like he did to Jazz Chisholm the other day. So I think, if, and right or wrong, and I don't always agree with it, 
But right or wrong, if there's one thing that Braves fans have consistently been mad and frustrated with this year, it's been the pitching, both in the rotation and the bullpen at times as well. And again, I don't always think it's warranted, but that is the one thing that more consistently Braves fans have been mad about and probably what worries them the most going into the postseason is the pitching. So just a couple things I want to make people feel better. Charlie Morton since July 1st, 3-4-9 ERA. That is the point of a three-starter. Can, can I also that say? That is literally the point of a three-starter. Okay, so I that's the first thing. So, yeah. wait, and then the, the what was the other concern you said about the pitching? I'm just looking right now at, uh, there's this really useful thing on baseball reference, position performance wins above average, where you can kind of see how much better a unit is than in the league. Like the Braves have the 10th best starting pitching above average. And that's with all of these Schuster, Soroka, Dodd, Chirinos, Allen, Winans starts, right? <laughs> and, and that's pretty good. You can't be number one at everything. You can be number, you're number nine. That's okay. Number 10. Like you yeah. said, we're, we're in such a good place right now. When you are 10th in something, that hurts. No, that's, that's, <laughs> and I, I hear that. And I, and I understand like having those standards. The, the, the real wild thing about Morton, um, that Jazz Grand Slam is the only homer he's allowed in his last eight starts. <laughs> and so it's like, that was just extremely terrible timing. And I will say that I, just looking at the numbers, because I, you know, I'm just looking at like basically Braves pitching since the beginning of August, you know, Morton, I, the command. Yeah. I mean, that, that's definitely troubling. He's, I, if anything, he has been, been very wild, a lot of walks over his last, but the strikeouts have been there too. So mm -hmm. again, you know, kind of same thing as Strider where you, you know, he's not walking guys, but it's like, it's just the timing of a, of a terribly timed home run or a couple walks. And then it just, it just looks uglier than it is the Bryce Elder regression. We all saw it coming, right? Yeah. I think his story has been amazing this year, but like, if you expected him to have a two ERA all year, like that's that's your you were counting on something that is not it was not realistic to begin with. But again, I'm still looking. Again, I'm just looking at like since since uh, since the start of August, Minter Iglesias Johnson nails yeah. all of those guys ERAs under two over the last two months, um, and like that's the Johnson especially. My goodness, he has been just a, a tremendous addition. So I agree. Like yeah, this is the weak spot. But that's how good they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like I, I would you know, complain about that too if, if the top of my line of you know looked the way that the Braves do. So, and I get it. And it's it's also insular. And when you when you are so so you know focused on one thing, like it's yeah. you, you, the bad stuff will feel yeah. a lot worse than it actually is. But I'm telling you, they're still in a, a pretty good spot here. I have another question. All right. Everyone's locked up, right? Mm. Except for Max Reed. <laughs> yeah. Max Freed, free agent at the end of next season. You mentioned before, he is the ace. With all due respect to Strider, Max Freed is automatic when he's on the mound and he's right. Is there a concern in Braves world like, oh, we're going to lose Freed? Or is it just too greedy of a perspective? It's like, oh, we're going to lose this guy. It's like, well, you get to keep everybody else. <laughs> so is that a concern over the next, you know, five years who the other starting pitchers are going to be oh it's definitely a concern it's something that we've talked about a lot on the podcast really going back you know last off season and even in the last season everybody's you know wondering and asking when are they gonna extend max freed when are they gonna lock him up they've done all these other extensions why not max freed and there is real concern I i've gone on record as saying i don't think he extends with the braves i think he goes to free agency and i, I think he goes somewhere yeah, else. You know, think yeah. about it that way. like it's not like yeah. they have to probably try right and the other part of that is, too, in all these extensions the Braves have done, it's been for young players coming out of their arbitration years, which I know that's what Freed is doing, but he's a little bit older. And it's been position players. You just haven't seen Alex do it for pitchers. There's just a lot more risk there. They did it with Strider, but again, it was after his first year. And, and you just took, haven't seen and he it And took, lot. you know, if they do that right. deal now, it looks... And Freed's totally not going to do that. Freed's yeah. not going to do that. And, like... Which, by the way, I totally agree with that approach. Pitchers are all risky. I love Max Reed. I hope he pitches 200 innings a year for the next 10 years. But that's not an accident. And that is, I would build around position players too, especially when you're talking about the caliber of position players that the Braves have. So, uh, <laughs> and look like, at the guys yeah. they've let they've let go recently. We're talking about Freddie Freeman, a franchise player. You're talking about Danzy Swanson, which I don't want to get into the Freddie Freeman discussion. That all happened. It was weird the way it went down, but. Still, they didn't, you know, 
grovel and, and just give in to his demands because of where he was in his career. And like he's been great. And I think most Braves fans and even Braves front office probably thought he would be, but still they didn't want to give in to a, an aging player. You know, same thing with Danzy Swanson, who just got unbelievable money from the Cubs. The Braves weren't going to match that. It's just they're willing to let these guys walk in free agency if they, they feel that's the right path for them. So, again, like you said, if it was going to happen, it probably would have by now. And Max Reed's not going to take one of these, you know, for team-friendly deals. He's earned this opportunity. I have no ill will towards him. If he does, he's earned every right to do that. And um, he's also part of the Players Association. So, yeah. <laughs> Also, oh, yeah, that's I, the other thing. He's, he's the yeah. team rep. Yeah. And he's gone a free agency, man. Yeah. I would say, too, the last thing about this, um, and, I mean, I have questions, too, but we don't have to keep going all day. Uh, I think I am interested in, in what – the Braves rotation looks like in 2025 does shouldn't be stressing you out because you're the best team in baseball and you have a good chance to win the world series this year or next. And even after that, after if he leaves. Um, but it is interesting looking at this when they've had so many of these guys that they've drafted and developed and gotten to the big leagues. And then they've gone off course in some weird ways in the case of Ian Anderson, in the case of Kyle Wright, in the case of like, and then so many of these guys that we've seen is Soroka, obviously Tukey. like, Tukey, like there have been so that's I mean, it's a little bit longer ago, but sure. Like there's a lot of these guys that with the exception of Strider and, and Elder, like it's like you have something and then you, maybe you don't. And so I, I am super curious and I'm like the biggest Hurston Waldrop fan in the world. So I think you'll see him sooner rather than later, whether it's a starter or reliever. But the point is, is like I am curious about that. At the same time, like I've learned to try. I mean, the, the Smith Shaver thing is is unbelievable. I mean, the fact that yeah. he was able to come up and I was actually there. I was at his debut in Cincinnati. Um, and like, I couldn't fathom, or I don't know if it was his debut, but it was one of his first starts. Uh, and like to, to turn that guy into a big leaguer, I know he struggled, but to get even 21 innings out of a 20 year old is, is amazing. Um, and so that's the thing where I trust it, but I am looking at it and I don't know who those guys are going to be. This is the definition of a first world problem. I 100%. 100%. Listen, like, if your biggest concern in September of 2023 is the opening day rotation in 2025, you're doing you're okay. a good, that's a great right yeah. and that's that's a i think probably a good place to leave it because it's like you guys are okay. <laughs> yeah the, the one thing i will say on that to kind of answer the question it, it is a concern obviously and it's a concern we're probably not too worried about right now but you look at 2025 obviously you hope spencer strider's at the top i think a lot depends on kyle wright and, and what he looks like coming back healthy i mean shoulder issues are you know they're scary and you never know how that's going to heal up can't count on anything for Soroka at this point. And he's really only got one year left anyway. So uh, that doesn't, you know, really focus on the pitcher. Who knows what Ian Anderson is going to look like coming back. So there aren't any guarantees in this rotation beyond 2024. I will say they've done a great job developing pitching. And we talked about it earlier. While the Braves might not have the best farm system in baseball, there are a lot of pitchers in that system that I'm so excited about. You already talked about AJ Smith, Shelver, Hurston Waldrop, who I think are their two best prospects, but you also got guys, you know, down there, Spencer Schwellenbox of the world that they have, uh, John and Carlos Lara is another young kid that's coming up. That looks really exciting. I mean, there's just a lot of good arm talent in that organization and they've done such a great job developing these guys. Like you said, they may get up here and maybe they have a little flash and then maybe kind of fall off, but they've done so good at developing them and getting them here to where they have a role, however long it's for. So I have confidence in them getting to that point, it, but it is, it is a question mark. I don't really know who that I trust beyond Strider being in that 2025 rotation. So it's certainly something they have to be, I'm sure I know they're aware of and something yeah. that they're thinking about, but you look at their drafts, it's pitching heavy at the top. And yeah. I think they know that if you want to win and succeed in the future, you got to have pitching. And it helps when you got all your position players locked up through the end of the decade. So that helps with it as well. Absolutely. Don't be worried about it, Braves fans. You're, it's okay. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's, let's be excited for this October. <laughs> yes. All right. Any more questions for me? Uh, no, sir. <sighs> I, I have some stories. I have some, all right. some fun Braves. Story I, times with, with Jake Mintz. Go ahead. Today's episode is also brought to you by Jace Medical. Don't get caught unprepared when disaster strikes. Make sure you have emergency medication ready. Jace Medical can help you be prepared. Their Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. I ordered mine, came in the mail the other, way, other day, was blown away by the stuff that they provide. 
to you in this Jace case for medical emergencies in times of disaster. Jace handles everything from online, online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace case plus an additional $20 off by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Braves will start a three-game series with the Cubs at home on Tuesday, beginning at 7.20 p.m. Eastern. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. Yeah, so, like, I think about the Braves a lot because they're really good. And if you're looking at baseball from a national perspective, you have to think about them a lot. And I spent a lot of time thinking, like, how did they do this? How did they get to this? And last week in Philly, um, I'm walking – through like the tunnel out into the dugout. And the thing about the Braves coaching staff sometimes is that you can smell them before you hear them. And then you hear them before you see them. And that is cigar and cigarette smoke. And then that is yelling. And then that is their faces. And in this tiny little room in the tunnel, I found Ron Washington and Eric Young. Just every game, they sit in there for about an hour from like five to six and Eric Young has one cigar and Wash has like 28 cigarettes. <laughs> and last week they let me like sit in and I just chopped it up with them for an hour. It was nuts. I'll write about it at some point. And the, the number one takeaway I have and the number one thing I want to communicate to people who really care about this team that's so impressive is the conviction and faith that these guys have in their players not just from who they are as players, but who they are as people, and the belief in the end of the development and the end of the season. The like When they got Michael Harris, they were like, okay, this is what he is now. This is what we know he can be. We know he'll get there. What are the steps we need to take to get to that point? Same thing with Austin Riley. Same thing with Ronald Acuna Jr. They see the end, they believe in the end, and then they work towards that point. And it's the same thing over the course of the season. The Braves are like, we're going to win the World Series. What do we need to do to get to that point? And that's not how a lot of teams operate. And part of that has to do with, I think, how old their coaching staff is, which is very interesting compared to a lot of the teams in baseball. And that is the thing that makes me the most amped about the Braves, is really the coaching staff and how unique and knowledgeable and convicted they are in everything they do. Yeah, I think that's the underrated thing about this team. Obviously, Brian Snickers at the helm, and I think he does a great job of keeping this team even killed, you know, throughout the entire seasons, the ups and downs. I think he's great at that. But you look at Ron Washington, Eric Young, who you just mentioned, Walt Weiss, uh, Kevin Seitzer. I, I mean, this is, you know, again, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because always, you know, I feel like my bias comes out. I feel like it's the best coaching staff in baseball when you look at these guys who are former managers who are so just I, great people. Back. I think this is the best coaching staff in baseball for the group of players they have. Okay. And that's that's on purpose. They have gotten guys who are symbiotic, who fit with the coaching staff. I yeah. think that if you gave that coaching staff the Phillies, I don't think it would work the same. And if you gave the Phillies coaching staff the Braves, I, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's purpose-built in a very intended way. That is impressive, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the coaching staff, right? But like, and these guys are very knowledgeable. But it's just they're so perfect with the group of guys they have because they buy into what the coaches are saying. And and I think what you're saying, and hopefully I'm not taking this the wrong way, it's that word culture, which we've already kind of talked about. And I think the Braves have built such a a great culture of players. And I think when Alex brings in players, it's built to to fit that that narrative and that culture yeah. environment that they've created there that makes it so special all right i do want to move on we got a, a little bit more time here i do want to look kind of future focus and i know we've kind of talked about it already but on a national scale we've talked about the braves you know the best team certainly on paper in baseball but we know the postseason doesn't always go as expected in baseball you looked at last year we talked about it with the braves you know certainly we're a better team on paper than the phillies but when your two best pitchers are sick injured Phillies as hot as they were, not taking anything away from them. They were they were on a, a serious run at that time. Everything can happen. How do you see, you know, this postseason unfolding for the Braves? What are some of their keys to to winning 
the World Series, obviously, other than scoring more runs than their opponents and, and not giving up a lot. What what do you see that could trip this team up the most in the postseason? I would say that uh, again, if you're if you're kind of mapping out the concern on the pitching side, when your offensive talent is this strong, I think um, <laughs> you're someone is going to go zero for fifteen, and you're just yeah. going to have to accept that someone's going to go. You know, Altuve was zero for twenty, whatever, in the playoffs last year, and they still won the World Series. Like, there's versions of that that you can kind of withstand. Again, it's a timing thing. It's when does your starter get blown up in the second inning? Because if that happens to the point where your bullpen is now stressed to the point where it's impacting the next day, it's really a domino thing. And that that's where the teams that are thin on pitching, which, again, I don't think the Braves are necessarily thin on pitching. But if you're going to start to expose the weakness or if you're going to get to a, a pitching staff that is going to get tired, that's where it starts to come. Yeah. Now, I, I, don't, I think they have enough to where you don't have to worry about it that much. But it's really going to be about kind of the sequencing of when the occasional bad start happens that I think is, is the biggest concern. And what goes wrong, my guy, you saw it last year. Yeah. You know, if they see the Phillies in a short five-game set, mm -hmm. that team could get hot. That's an amazing lineup. And the thing with last season, like, those games weren't really that close. Like, I understand that what happened with Freed and Strider was fluky. What happened with Morton wasn't. They just blasted Morton into the turf. Right. And so could the Phillies roll into Truist and take one of those two games and then go back to Philly and just get hot and the crowds hopping and they win them? Absolutely. Yep. We saw it last year like that. I I have I think it's more likely they lose to the Phillies in a five game set than the Brewers or the Dodgers in a seven game set. Yeah, makes sense. Right? That's where I'm kind of falling on that. I think. I, they'll, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I wanted to ask you just kind of the follow up because I don't want to make this excuse for the Braves if they they lose, but this postseason format, I think it's got to change. There's five days off between the end of the regular season mm -hmm. and the NLDS, and and now there's a game a day off between game one and game two of the NLDS, and then another day, you know, for travel between games two and three. I didn't even realize that. I didn't. I didn't, need, I didn't need either until I looked this up the other day. That is just—it's an insane amount of time off for one of the top two seeds. And yeah, it's an advantage to not have to go to the wild card. And it really is only an advantage in game one with those days off. Whoever it's going to be, say it is the Phillies. Zach Wheeler is going to pitch game two of that series. It's not like it's completely throwing off the other team's rotation. Again, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just want to ask your opinion about this postseason format. I mean, are you okay with it? Does this need to yeah. change? I, I feel like it's it, this is just too many days off. There's no perfect way to do it, right? Because no, the reason sure. they do that is to get the two leagues on a different schedule, yep. and they want everyone to play on the same day, the first day, so that they can hype it up. And I think that's a Friday. Mm -hmm. And so they yeah. want everyone to play on a Friday afternoon, well, Friday night. Well, so Saturday. It starts Saturday. on a Saturday. It starts on a Saturday, yeah. So even more so, right? Like they want everyone playing on a Saturday. No one's at work, whatever, right? That's like the reason for it. Yep. The postseason is not for truth. It's not. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted truth, we, the MLB season would be like uh, the English Premier League, <laughs> where we would play the regular season and the team with the best record would get the trophy and that would be it, right? But we're we'll go Americans. with that this year. We're Americans, right? <laughs> we don't care about the truth. We want to be entertained. And that's yeah. why our country does playoffs. And no one else in the world really does playoffs. Like some other countries do playoffs, but no one does playoffs like we do playoffs, right? Yeah. And so the point of October is entertainment, is yeah. to be put through the cauldron. Being a great team in October is an accomplishment, and winning the World Series is an accomplishment. If the Braves lose in four games, right, and the Reds win the World Series or whatever the heck, <laughs> I'll look back on 2023 and say the Braves were the best team, right? That doesn't change that. Yeah. And that's why... I struggle with the conversation about how do we create the format to be the most fair? It's not about being fair. If it was about being fair, we would hand the Braves the trophy in two weeks. Yeah. You know? yeah. I would say that I will say that, and I know Jake is definitely right in terms of getting the leagues on different days. That part does bother me. Like, I don't like that. It's slightly different. Like that off day immediately after the, again, I don't can complain about days off is a little silly. And I think that, skipping the wild card round is still just such a massive deal like I, it's that the phillies could lose before they even get there like that yeah. is very possible because the braves won the division by a million games and they earned that and so that is an advantage that is yeah. that is going to happen 
And like that, that is by itself already a huge deal. It is funny in the Braves case in particular, when you talk about days off, because this is the only way they're going to get days off. Is if <laughs> the league says you don't play today. Otherwise, <laughs> He's going to play a baseball game. <laughs> Matt Olson just is going to be standing at first base for three hours at Truist Park during the so, days in between. <laughs> I don't know if that means that that's a bad thing because they are so used to being in rhythm. I don't know if that's a good thing because, my God, they need a nap and they need to stop <laughs> playing baseball for a little bit. Yeah. Who knows? Making excuses for that stuff is pointless because, as Jake says, it's random anyway. And so just yeah. be glad that you're in position. You probably have – Home field advantage all the way through. You have this amazing roster. What happens, happens. And uh, the Braves fans have a lot of lot to be proud of in the season, no matter what. Well, great. Well, that's a great way to end it. I wanted to uh, give you guys a shout out. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, Jake, I'll shoot it to you if you want to you know, shout out everything you guys got yeah. going on and everything. So we do our podcast, Sirius XM, and the podcast network, Baseball Barbacast is the name of it. We'll be going very often. Uh, we write over at foxsports.com. And I guess for the folks who listen to this, like I'm going to be at every Braves postseason game, I think, um, in the clubhouse, talking to players, doing interviews. Um, and so if you want that insight from someone who also makes jokes, I'm your guy. <laughs> uh, and you can get that on our podcast. Not to say that you shouldn't keep listening to Lockdown Braves, but you know, if you if in the event that the Braves get eliminated early and you want larger baseball coverage, we can help you with that. Well, and also, uh, I have a feeling Braves fans always want to hear more about the Braves. And we do a lot of that on our show. So definitely uh, join us over there, Baseball Barbacast. And yeah, Jake, thank you so much for having us on. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun talking baseball with you. Thank you so much. We'll uh, do it again some other time. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Locked On Braves, making this your first listen of each and every day. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jake and Jordan from Sessitas Family Barbecue. Make sure you check them out if you haven't already. And another reminder, Braves Cubs start an important series for the Cubs on Tuesday night at 7.20 p.m. Eastern. Catch every pitch of the Braves hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app, Search Braves. Again, thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on. Uh, social media at Lockdown underscore Braves. Follow me at Shortstop Ball. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.